I decided to upgrade the sound system in my FJ Cruiser. I brought this Sony XAV-64BT for around $100. The stereo cost about $200 in eBay used. Like I said in a previous video where I reviewed the Dual XDVD256, I prefer a good used stereo than a bad new one. The original stereo made by Fujitsu 10 has a very nice sound, but just like the one that came with the Avalon, is lack a lot of modern features. It is a 40 watts X4 amplifier. It has a 6 CD changer, too bad I don't have a CD burner or use CDs since 2006. It plays MP3 CDs. Has one auxiliary input and FM, AM tuner. The new Sony stereo is not the best sellers, but it is a much welcome improvement. It has a 52 watts times 4 amplifier. A single DVD CD player. Plays MP3s via USB and DVD, no SD slot. Two auxiliary inputs, one in the front and one in the rear. Turner. Bluetooth for music streaming and hands-free and backup camera input. It has an input for steering wheel controls but for some reason I couldn't make it work, it only selects the source or turns off the source but nothing else can be done right now with the steering wheel controls. I really hate Sony for not detailing the ports in the stereo, in the installation manual it says this jack is for remote in, but it does not specify how to configure it. It does say it may need a separate adapter maybe need but it doesn't say anywhere not even in their support page what adapter is need. They do have a cable configuration for Toyota and other Japanese cars to plug in the steering wheel controls but I put it like it said in their web page and it only performed those two functions I mentioned earlier. So I took it apart, in the front panel we have the screen controller, a flash memory and an audio controller. In the main board, it has the connector for the DVD, the main amplifier, the Bluetooth module and the processor. The amplifier integrated circuit is a weird one, it has the voltage regulators along with the amplifier's circuits in the same chip. That strikes me like it is not going to give me a decent sound. So, the old stereo has three jacks connected, and a fourth one without any connection. E43 has the steering wheel controls and the auxiliary input. E42 has the front left and right speaker connections, and the E41 connector has the power, accessory power, rear left and right speaker, illumination, ground and remote power for the subwoofer's amplifier. Since the original stereo did not have camera input, no video player and no hands-free, we have to find out how to reuse some signals to and from the car. We need a microphone for the hands-free calls, the video signal from the backup camera, the signal from the reverse, backup lights, the three signals cables from the steering wheel controls, the parking brake signal that allows to watch video, you know what, let's just put it to ground. The hardest part in here is the video signal. I get a service manual for the FJ Cruiser but it was for an older model. The FJ Cruiser started to have a backup camera in 2010 I think. So the manual does not have anything regarding the backup camera so I need to find it myself. Since the mirror in the windshield has the monitor for the backup camera, I thought it was a very good starting point. I removed the mirror, it has a hex number 8 screw, don't need to remove it, just lose it a little bit and pull it upwards. There are some caps to remove. It could it be a lot easier if GENTEX, the maker of this mirror, has some documentation on the pin out of this mirror, but since I could not find any information, I had to disassemble the mirror. In order to disassemble the mirror, very carefully in starting but the top, start inserting a flat screwdriver in the bezel until you pop up all the tabs around the mirror. Luckily, the board has some pins marked with its functions. I just have to set my multimeter to detect continuity and follow those two pins marked as video plus and video minus. I followed those pins to the red and blue cables in the connector. From there, those connect to the white with the strip and the red with the strip and the FJ harness. I followed the harness to the left front bottom part on the cabin, removing this side panel there is the connector to the rest of the system. I attached the cables in there, for the reverse backup signal, and the video plus and video negative signals. I brought a harness made for Toyota cars, the connections are pretty straightforward, green with green, 
yellow with yellow, black with black, etc. Once I have soldered the main harness, I have to build three more connectors, one for the hands-free microphone, other for the auxiliary input, and a third one for the steering wheel controls. Like I said before, it's not going to work properly, but I will connect it and see if I can figure it out later. Another cable that will not be fitted into the main harness is this blue one for the reverse signal. That cable will be routed directly from the stereo to the panel in the front left part of the cabin where we connected the video signal. I'm going to review all the connections and make sure everything is connected properly. I always test that everything works before making the final assemble. So let's test it. I put the key with an accessory to test that the accessory source was correctly connected. Note how the stereo only takes like 7 seconds to start playing from the USB and not 3 minutes like the Dual X DVD 256 that we reviewed in a previous video. original audio for this section was removed because a company that looked like a patent troll, but in this case was a copyright troll, was claiming that the song, I'll Be There For You by the Rembrandts, from the TV series, Friends, was actually a song supposedly owned by them and called, I Want You Back, but they failed to mention which group sing that song or where can I listen to their original song they claimed they own. So I opted to remove the video and remove the song instead of working for copyright trolls. YouTube's claim page did not had the option to say, no, this is not the song they claim to be. Thank you for your understanding. USB works, DVD works, speakers works, Bluetooth works, backup camera works. Let's assemble the dashboard and test again. <sighs> Once in place, let's review it. I will reset the unit to start from zero. Pinch this hole with a clip and push the inside button for a few seconds, you will hear the DVD moving, that means the reset is complete.
say okay to the warning about not watching videos while the car is moving. I am not sure if that warning can be eliminated. Just press okay. Then it asks you if you are using the rear stereo output as a subwoofer output or the specialized single RCA subwoofer output. The listening position, all of this can be changed later. Once you select everything, it goes to the off position. To turn it on, you press source button or source list prompt in the screen. It gives you all the source options. Let's try the tuner first. This icon will search for the next station. If you want to store that station in a memory, you press memory in the screen into the position where you want to store the station. Inserting a disc will automatically switch to the DVD, CD menu. Again, it took only 11 seconds to read the disc and start playing it, and not 3 minutes like the dual DVD stereo. Even that it has a touch screen, you cannot select the options in the disk menu by touching them. You need to move from option to option using the on-screen control. I will stop this in order to avoid copyright infringements. Let's check the USB. I just insert it, and like before, a few seconds and stars playing the first song. Of course you can organize your music in folders and subfolders. The Bluetooth. Just open your phone's Bluetooth menu and you should see a Sony Automotive trying to pair, select it and that is it. Once the Bluetooth is connected, you can send any audio from your phone to the stereo, in this case, I'm going to play a YouTube video and should be heard in the car's speakers. For Pandora, you need an external module that I could not find but I bet it costs more than this stereo. Sense Me is not another source per se, it is a feature that groups the music in your device by mod or RPM. It is like a genius in iTunes. It is required to connect the source of music to your computer and install the Sense Me software in order to create the playlists. You have also the auxiliary input, once in that menu you can select front or back input. Now, let's see the configuration menus. I'm going to put some music to listen to the music equalization. Click in this little toolbox to enter the configuration menu. Let's configure the sound first. Click on EQ7 and will take us to the equalizer presets. We can select custom and customize the equalization. I guess the 7 means it is a 7 band equalizer. You can select also fader and balance and test every speaker, front, left and right, rear, left and right, and the subwoofer level. The FJ Cruiser has a very weird speaker system. Ur has some speakers in the roof, in the dashboard, in the doors, even that its original stereo only has four outputs. It has a hidden module where you connect all the outputs there and it will split it for all the speakers. 
One of the bad things about it is that you cannot directly replace the speakers because it will let the roof speakers connected and will distribute the power among out the speaker instead of router all the power to the newly installed speaker. Other problem is that the original subwoofer in the FJ is feed by the high output of the stereo and not the low signal. That means that any equalization you put to the speakers or any setting in the stereo's crossover will affect the subwoofer. I am not sure if the amplifier in the subwoofer is capable of receiving low voltage input, so I will find that splitter box, remove it and install a new amplifier for the subwoofer. You can modify the listening position and will make a virtual positioning of the speaker so you hear them better. Also, we have the digital crossover, as I mentioned before, it's not going to help us much because the subwoofer has the same signal than the speakers. If you cut lows from the speakers, it will cut it also for the subwoofer. In the screen menu, you have options to change the themes, and no, you cannot personalize those themes. You can turn on and off the clock, and why would you want to do this? Well, in all Toyota's cars, there is always a clock in the dashboard, so I will turn this clock off since I already have the one in the dashboard. In the visuals menu, there is no much to configure at least you are playing a DVD. In general, you can configure the language, the clock, and auto off a feature, the beep that sounds every time you press a button, dim the screen, select how the rotatory command works, select if you are going to use the camera input or not. CT is clock time, if is the automatic set time feature that uses radio stations to get the correct time. And now, the backup camera. I put the car in reverse and here two connections will work, the reverse input cable and the RCA input of the backup camera. I left the monitor in the mirror for now, but I am thinking I will install another camera. Whenever I am off-roading, sometimes you climb a very pronounced hill and you can't see where are you going, you only see the sky. I will put another camera in the front posting to the floor so see where I am stepping. I want to mention that the stereo did not fill all the space of the old one so the metal frames inside the dashboard were visible. I cut a pair of strips from a black cardboard box and glued them with hot glue and assembled it again. I think it looks nice. That little hole is for the microphone, since it is cardboard, I could not cut the hole very precisely, I will try with a harder material later. Pictures can be play as a slideshow, no effects just simple JPEG pictures. I was not able to make the video work from the USB, according to Sony, you have to play only videos with MPEG-4, 7 megabit rate, 744 480 pixels. I did all that and the stereo still does not recognize the file much less it play it. Another issue I found, Sony recommends to not leave the USB memory plugged while you start the engine. Do they expect us to plug and unplug the USB divide every time you get into the car? So far nothing has happened to my USB memory. My final recommendation, stay away from Sony. It is incredible that the creator of the Walkman, and so many great audio devices, now is just a little bit better than the Chinese brands. The only advantage I found in this Sony stereo over the Dual X DVD V is the fast loading of files from the DVD and the USB, and that most of the time, it does not interrupt the music while you are searching for another source or setting. But regarding the sound, I think you won't notice the difference in quality between the Sony and the Dual X DVD and you are talking of more than $150 of difference in price. I used to have a Pioneer stereo in my Toyota Celica, 
Besides great sound quality, it has SD slot, configuration for the on-wheel controls, front and rear USB, fast loading, navigation and Pandora options. The only thing I disliked about the Pioneer was that any accessory you want to buy like the GPS module cost ridiculous more than what the stereo cost. I think I will search for a Kenwood or Pioneer stereo to replace this Sony. Thank you for watching.